Well, you, your position is, is obviously clear and we talk to you every week and we know you think the RBA has misread this completely. That being said, do you think that the RBA will get to the point where they have to cut rates before the end of the year, despite what Governor Bullock has said recently? Well, I think they said they wouldn't put them up uh, for the next couple of years and then we humiliated and put them up you know, within about six to eight months after that. So all of the posturing, all of the rhetoric that Michelle Bullock and this new bloke from the UK uh, keep spouting as recently as last Friday, I think they're going to be humiliated. I think other than sheer pig-headedness, uh, the case is overwhelming for a rate reduction. And it doesn't matter what, you know, market economists that come on Sky as well and keep saying, oh, we've got embedded inflation, you know, blah, 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 blah. It's like the economy is being driven into recession by the Reserve Bank's interest rate posture. End of story. Uh, so they don't have to care about unemployment. They don't have to care about how we've gone from 3.7 to 3.9 to 4.1 to 4.3 in terms of unemployment. They don't care about that. Uh, they simply care about wanting to try and pretend that they've been right. I mean, I've right. one economist on your program on, or on Sky regularly who was demanding through the middle of the year that there be three interest rate increases this year. Well, the economy would be not just flatlining, we'd be, we'd be at, the, at the funeral, you know, uh, waving, the, uh, waving the economy goodbye if, 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 if those sort of economists were being listened to. Mike Burgess has sought to clarify the remarks a few weeks on from making them, but now seeking to clarify his remarks on who would be stopped from getting a visa out of Gaza. Yeah, well, I think uh, Mike has correctly clarified his position. And I have great confidence in Mike's ability. Uh, he steered Australia to some very difficult times over the last few years. And as evidence, as the Prime Minister said a little earlier on the show, uh, you know, Labor has got great confidence in him. And I think that was shown by his reappointment. I think this was a small misstep. Uh, he's perhaps not the sort of finesse of words in the way that politicians and some of the media are, are but he has now clarified clearly you cannot advocate in support of Hamas. Hamas are an organisation committed to the destruction and removal of the State of Israel. Uh, and if you want to like their tweets, if you want to wear their scarves, if you want to wear their symbols, uh, then you're not coming to this country. Uh, and that's the way it should be. And I'm, I'm very pleased to see Mike uh, made it even more clear than he has made it in the past. But these are fundamental red flags, fundamental red lines that Asia will not recommend uh, a visa of any sort for uh, someone who has that character. Stephen, finally on the US, we've seen this, uh, this race. It certainly looks very close at the moment. Where's the momentum in the United States at the moment? Well, I think the momentum up until the, uh, uh, the debate will stay with uh, Vice President Harris. Uh, Trump has been floundering. His team have not known how to cope with the fundraising, the bigger crowds than Trump's got. We know Trump has set by the size of his crowds and takes it personally. Uh, so I think the key swing factor, I think Greg Sheridan said a little earlier on the show as well, is going to be that debate and how both of them perform in that debate. Can Trump control himself? 70 years of history says no, he can't. Uh, so it's up to Vice President Harris <laughs> to, uh, to make her case that President, former President Trump is unfit for office, that the policy agenda, uh, what's it called, uh, Election 25 or Manifesto 25, is an insane manifesto, if you believe in good democracy. Uh, and you've just got to keep pointing out Trump's complete attempts to pretend that one day he's for abortion, the next day he's against abortion, and he's going to put High Court, Supreme Court justices on that will knock over Roe versus Wade, even though they publicly said they wouldn't. You know, you just can't believe Donald Trump on this issue, and he has made a complete mess of his response on this issue. So I think uh, Harris has got the momentum, but everything will depend on that debate now. So it's going to be a fascinating debate, probably the most watched debate in many, many years in terms of impact. Yes, indeed, we'll be watching it next week, Stephen. Thank you. We will. Thoughts on it then. Appreciate it.